Hello everyone, Sula here with another big adventure. In this episode, I'm going to answer the number one most frequent question I'm asked about my videos and also about photos I've posted on my Flickr account and on my website. And that's some variation of the following. Can I see through my telescope what you showed in that photo? Or is what I see through my telescope going to look like what you showed in your video last week? Or what can I expect to see in my telescope? Well, the short answer is I can't show you exactly what I see through my telescope. And with respect to photos, no, because the photos are multiple long exposures that have been processed to reveal faint details and colors that are just not visible to the human eye. But also, the video is not going to be the same because to show you a video, I have to remove my diagonal and my eyepiece and put on an adapter and then the camera. And so therefore it won't have any magnification except with the Dobsonian. I am able to get focused by using a Barlow. That's the only way I can get focus. But it's just not going to look the same. And the time it takes me to do that and recenter and refocus, conditions may have changed. And also, uh, it just won't look the same. But I can take some video and try to show you in a way that is as representative as possible of what you might expect to see through your telescope of various types and sizes by showing you video in real time and not using any digital zoom, which I did use in my Jupiter video, probably went overboard a little bit because the quality goes down when you use digital zoom. It's the same thing that happens with your smartphone's camera when you spread it out and make it bigger. That's a digital zoom and you probably notice the quality goes down and it's just not what you see realistically. But I can show you video in real time and through some sketches and I won't use any digital zoom and I'll try to make the video as representative as possible of what you can expect to see in your telescope. But Keep in mind that it still won't be what you see through your telescope because that will include numerous factors, including how dark are the skies where you use your telescope? And are there any local lights? And is there cloud cover? And how is the seeing? And how good are your telescope's optics? Are your eyepieces quality eyepieces? And most important, how well trained are your eyes to looking through a telescope? And also, how old are you because your pupils just can't dilate as big as a younger person's, although a person can make up for that through experience at the eyepiece. So, I'm going to show you some objects through a two inch refractor, a four and a half inch refractor, a six inch refractor, a six inch Maxitov Cassegrain, a 10 inch Dobsonian, and a 12 inch Schmidt Cassegrain. And we're going to look at Jupiter, Saturn, and the great Andromeda galaxy, M31. So after it gets dark, I'll go set everything up. <laughs> that will take me a while. And I'll come back and we'll get started. Okay, I've polar aligned the six inch refractor and the four and a half inch refractor. And uh, in just a minute, I'll go over to the 12 inch telescope and I'm gonna get it on Saturn first because it came up first, but I have two problems. <laughs> Number one, um, I don't know how to attach this to a tripod. Uh, I would need some kind of screw. And secondly, I've run out of cameras. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I can't show you anything in this, but trust me, it would be tiny because it's only 61, 51 millimeters. So I I'm not gonna show you <laughs> in a 51 millimeter, but let's go over to the four and a half inch telescope and have a look at Saturn. So this is an Orion Eon triplet 
115 millimeters, so approximately four and a half inch aperture. And I have a crop sensor camera on it and I had to leave my focal reducer on it because that's the only way I am able to attach the camera and get it to focus. So let's have a look through this four and a half inch telescope at Saturn. Okay, this is Saturn through a 115 millimeter refractor. Now let's go to the 150 millimeter refractor. That's almost six inches. Okay, this is my six inch refractor, 150 millimeter ED Skywatcher. This one also has a focal reducer attached to it because I don't have the extension tubes. I think this one is 0.8x focal reducer, field flattener, and I have a crop sensor camera attached to it. And so I'm going to switch to this camera and show you what it looks like. And again, it looks very tiny. This is Saturn through a six inch refractor. I've got it at a shutter speed of one over 50 ISO 800. It is attached to a focal reducer and a six inch refractor. Now I have the four and a half inch refractor pointed at Jupiter and it doesn't look good. <laughs> uh, I don't know if the seeing is bad. I don't know, it doesn't look good, I can tell you that right now. But I'll take some video of it with the four and a half inch refractor and then we'll go over to the six inch refractor. This is Jupiter through a four and a half inch refractor. I uh, have it at ISO 100 and 1 over 400 shutter speed because it just looked completely blown out. And so I don't think this looks very good, but this is Jupiter through a four and a half inch refractor. Okay, now we're going to look at Jupiter through a six inch refractor. And it's still very tiny. But here's Jupiter through a six inch refractor. This is Jupiter through a six inch refractor. Oh my God, why won't that animal go away? Jupiter through a six inch refractor. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is look at Saturn cause it's up and I, attach my camera to a two-ton Barlow. Saturn looks pretty small in here because I don't have a eyepiece on top of the Barlow, but this is pretty representative of what Saturn would look like in a 10-inch Dobsonian. But if I were looking without this camera with an eyepiece, I, I'd use my three-ton Barlow with an eyepiece on it and make Saturn even bigger. But it looks pretty good in here. Okay, this is Saturn through a 10-inch Dobsonian with a two-time Barlow. Go away! So after my video about Jupiter at opposition, I had some questions about whether that was what Jupiter looked like through my 12 inch telescope? And the answer is no, it's not possible currently for me to do that because I have to take off the diagonal and the eyepiece to put in an adapter with the Barlow with the camera attached to it. Conditions change a lot in the time it takes me to change all that. And also it is just not what it looks like through my eyepiece. It's just not possible for me to show you that. Secondly, I am able to digitally zoom in in my video editing software, but I'm going to show you as closely as I can what Jupiter looks like through my telescope in real time. And so that will give you a better idea. So 
Jupiter is big in this telescope to me. I mean, 12 inches is the biggest telescope I've ever owned. It's enormous, look at it. So Jupiter is big in this telescope and beautiful and bright, it's a great telescope. But if you wanna see it really big, go to a public observatory. If Jupiter or Saturn are visible, they almost certainly will put their telescope on a planet for public viewing because people love to look at the planets because they're easy to see. And so I've seen Jupiter, for example, through a 36 inch reflector telescope at the Chabot Observatory, and it looked great, but you're in line with a bunch of people. So you get what you get. You, you can't sit there and wait for the turbulence to settle down or say, ooh, I'd like to study it, no. So um, yes, you can see it bigger, but if you have a telescope at home, you know, even smaller than this, eight inches or six inches, the thing to do is to keep looking at it and study it, and then you will start to notice more detail. So I'll try to show you what, as accurate as representation as possible, so stay tuned. Oh my God, there's some kind of wild animal up there. Get out of here, get out, out, beat it. Scram! I know you probably think this is extremely exciting. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. There's a moose up there, but people are trampled by moose all the time and it won't go away. I don't know if I can continue this experiment. Anyway, I'm giving you a false impression that planets don't look good in refractors and they do. It's just that it looks tiny with the camera. But you asked. So there's your answer. It looks better in a big giant telescope. That's all I can tell you. Oh my God, do you hear it? I looked at it with my binoculars. It's enormous. Hello, Moosey friend. Can you go eat somewhere else, please? Okay, this is exciting. There's a great red spot transit happening right now. And that moose left, it was scaring me. So, um, this is terrible. I have to take this whole thing off and put the camera on and it takes a while, but I'll try to get some footage of that right now. just want to show you, now I have it set to camera mode and if I turn on the focus magnifier I can make Jupiter much bigger, but that's not how it looks to me. See, I can make it gigantic in the camera, but it doesn't look like that in the telescope, in the eyepiece, or even in the camera. That's the focus magnifier. Sorry, I had the ISO way too high. This is a digital zoom with the camera's focus magnifier. So that's a digital zoom. That's not what it looks like in my eyepiece or in my camera. But I just wanted to show you that because I can do the same thing with Premiere Pro, my video editing software. It's a digital zoom. So the quality goes way down. But it's interesting because at this extreme digital magnification, you can see Europa shadow, shadow as it crosses the face of Jupiter that black dot. And now I'm back to what it will actually look like on the video. 
The scene is very bad though. It looks like it's out of focus, but it's just turbulence. Well, this was one of those nights where everything goes wrong. The computer died, I don't know why. I was using it to auto guide. And so I don't know if I got anything on that telescope. I was looking at things in my Mead Schmidt Cassegrain and I was looking at some cool stuff, but the seeing is just about as bad as it could possibly be. And so I put it on Jupiter and it's one of those nights where it constantly looks like everything's out of focus, but it's really just that the seeing is bad, which is a shame because there was a transit, a shadow transit of Europa. I did look at it, it was neat and I tried to get some video of it. I don't know if it turned out, but I'll find out. So I'm packing it in because it's about 38 degrees out here and things are not going well and the moon's gonna come up any minute also. So that's the end of this evening of observing. Hello again. I've decided to continue with this project rather than abandon it after I put so much time in it. I have a six inch Maxitoff Cassegrain and I can show you some things in this telescope that will give you a lot better idea of what you can expect to see in a six inch telescope. And I can show you what to expect to see in a 10 inch telescope with this 10 inch Dobsonian. And I can show you what to expect to see in a 12 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. So when it gets dark, I'll come back and I will show you. And hopefully there won't be any wild animals tonight. Tonight, I've got my Skywatcher 150 millimeter ED refractor out with an eyepiece on it. Something I haven't done for a long time. And just looking at the alignment stars was such a pleasure. It's so great to look through a big refractor like this, that inky black background with the bright objects. It's just spectacular. So I'm gonna just go through everything over there in the teapot before it disappears until next summer. And I'm just gonna keep going up through the Milky Way as far as I can get until I have to go to bed. And I can tell you right now that refractors are fantastic telescopes and there's just no way for me to show you what I see through this. Just showing you what it looks like with the camera on there is just not comparable. But I'm going to make some drawings and help you out. In the meantime, I have my little 115 millimeter, and I am going to take some pictures with it. And I do have my 12 inch Mead Schmidt cast grain over there, but it wants me to use Capella as the second alignment star, and I can't see Capella. So uh, I'm gonna have to wait a couple hours. Okay, this project is so incredibly difficult. Every time I take an eyepiece off and put the camera on, I have to refocus, recenter, and I, I don't know, that last object in the Dobsonian, I just couldn't get it to focus. So I have a better idea. Let's look at some planets in this six inch Maxitoff Cassegrain. Because, wow, right now I'm looking at Saturn in a 24 millimeter, and it looks really good. And now I'm going to put this three-ton Barlow on and see how that looks. This telescope is really impressive. Really nice. Really, really nice. I mean, I've been looking at Saturn in a 12-inch <laughs> telescope, so... You know, you have to have reasonable expectations, but I think it looks really good. Especially when you compare the price of this telescope with the price of that 12-inch Mead Schmidt Cassegrain. <laughs> this is a good telescope. 
Okay, now I'm looking at Saturn through a 10 inch Dobsonian. It's 1200 millimeter focal length. I have a three time Barlow with a 24 millimeter eyepiece. And at first I had a 23 millimeter eyepiece that came with that Maxitov Cassegrain and Orion Aspheric. And when I looked at Saturn, I thought, my God, did atmospheric turbulence suddenly come between the time it took me to walk over from that telescope to this one? No, it's that eyepiece. It's a terrible eyepiece. If you get that Maxitov Cassegrain, immediately replace those terrible eyepieces with something nice like this Teleview Panoptic. It, it's just not as sharp as that little six inch Maxitov Cassegrain. Again, though, this telescope is really cheap, which is price, which is why I recommend it for beginners. Look how much aperture you get for four or five hundred dollars. So nice not to have to polar align and just you plop it down and you just move it around. And there's a lot to be said about Dobsonian, but tonight I'm talking about quality of what you can see and what you can expect to see. So. You're not going to get really sharp detail like you could with that Max Toff Cassegrain, but you'll be able to see a lot, and you'll be able to see deep sky faint objects with the big whopping aperture like this. Throwing the planets, that telescope's going to be sharper, but the sharpest, of course, is my 12 inch Meech Mitt Cassegrain. It's the king of my telescopes. Now I'm looking at Saturn through this 10 inch Dobsonian with my seven millimeter Nagler. It looks good, but it just looks like it's just a bright light. <laughs> Whereas when I look at it in this Maxitov Cassegrain, it just seems like a picture suspended in space. It <laughs> just looks so crisp. It's, it's really remarkable. It looks good in here. I'm not even gonna compare it <laughs> to my 12 inch cause It'll look fabulous, but oh well, what the heck. <laughs> well, Jupiter is beautiful. I've got an 11 millimeter eyepiece in here. It looks fabulous. It's showing what I call the pumpkin or the Halloween side of Jupiter because it has those pumpkin <laughs> bands at the bottom of it. Now, let's look at Saturn. What's the most striking thing they've ever seen in a telescope? And they'll all agree, it's Saturn. Whoa, whoa, Nelly. Saturn turns very quickly on its axis with a day lasting only about 10 and a half hours. The rings of She's Saturn the queen of telescopes, I'm telling you. Now for our final object, we're going to look at M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. First, with the 10 inch Dobsonian with the 24 millimeter eyepiece. And I think it looks quite impressive, very impressive. In fact, I can fit the two companion galaxies in there. And then when it's really, really striking is when I go from this 24 millimeter to 10 millimeter. And this is not even a very good eyepiece. And I think it would look really, really good. I can see dust lanes in this telescope. With this eyepiece in it. And I think it looks really good. Now we'll go over and look at Andromeda in the six inch Maxitov Cassegrain. And 
It's very unbecoming because I don't have the tripods extended very far, so I kind of have to get on my hands and knees. Very unbecoming for a lady. I'm not even going to use this chair because it doesn't go that low. Okay, first with the 24 millimeter. And it just is not as distinct as it is in the Dobsonian. Uh, let me see if I can make out dust lanes if I switch to the 11 millimeter. No, the Dobsonia wins on the deep sky object and the Maxitoff Cassegrain wins on the planets. And there you have it, folks. Well, that concludes this episode of what you can expect to see through your telescope of various sizes and types and with different eyepieces. I hope it helped. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, get out there and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.